we're a little late today. Actually, we are not. Just I am. Hunter is. Kyle's been out here since daylight. I've been out here since. Actually, I woke up at 8. I really did. But Kyle just took a minute to go and get me. Had to finish up some computer stuff, right? Yeah. Finish editing? Yeah. I'm going to say that. That's well, what we had to do. But now we're out here on completely different, small, little local lake. What's it called? When are you saying that? Mm -mm. But this is our house that we're staying in. Very nice. Yeah, it's kind of crazy nice. Very we'll nice. do a little walkthrough of it, I think. But super nice. Cool though. So a couple of them spawning. I probably caught five. No big ones at all. What they doing out there? This morning. It, this water is extremely clear when you get. Ricky caught a seven pounder. A seven? Mm -hmm. Yesterday I put on video. Yep. So. Was it on bed? No. On Ricky what? ain't bed fishing. Was Ricky ain't right? fishing in shadow water like ten foot. Oh really? Mhm. Mm so what are we gonna do today? Sight, bed fish. That's what I want to do. We'll do a little bit of everything then. Mix it up. Make sure everything's good. beautiful lake like like one of the be most prettiest lakes i've been to ever anywhere just so clear such nice houses nice docks the bank looks good the depth looks good it's just lo it looks like a really good there's lake there's not a lot of trash here either i've mm. noticed that no it's nice and there's fish in here a bunch of them and they're healthy yeah are they pretty mm -hmm. i think that's florida fish in general are just prettier than other fish a lot of them they live around grass are just real pretty a lot of times but I haven't seen any good ones at all on bed. Just real little ones. Maybe they're a little bit earlier than the other lake we were on yesterday. Maybe. You seen a real pretty bed through a top loader up and caught him. I mean, he wasn't. I didn't even have to set up on him and really working. He was just gas up there. Cool. That was a cool bite. Did you see him? Mm -hmm. You can see him in the water? You think he wanted that frog? Can you tell what, what I'm throwing? Oh, he bit me. A little sucker bit me. I got him to do it. Oh, gotta get the pliers on a frog fish. That's a good sign. Pretty little one. See him sitting up there on the bed. That's fun. Very, very fun. He came up there on this and I went and walked it. He went. Was he on bed? Yeah. I just seen a big white spot up there. Up there and caught him. He's got to swim a little way to get back to his bed. Beautiful, really good looking place, but they're not where I want them to be. And we have spent probably about half a day trying to catch them the way that I want to catch them, and it ain't happening. So, time to stop doing that and catch them where the actual fish are. Is it a big one? Yeah. Giant. That's like a 14 pounder. Little fish. About to unveil the boat wrap, do a little walkthrough of the boat I'm running, the wrap, all that type of stuff. A couple new sponsors, but we've been fishing up for a couple days down here in Florida. Absolutely beautiful. We're on a, new, a whole new small little local lake that I've never done today. We're actually going to break it down, do a little bit different. The uh, Bassmaster has a magazine article called Day on the Lake. And today on this lake, we're gonna kind of talk through what I'm looking for on the lake, what I wanna do, and all this type of stuff. So we're gonna do a actual day on the lake YouTube video, me breaking down this lake. But for right now, we're gonna do a little boat walkthrough video. So go show off the new wrap, a couple new sponsors, and then hop in the boat and walk through it. A couple updates that was made. I'm running a Camus CX-20 this year. You know, I really liked that boat last year. Some people like to go the 21 foot route. It's really good depending on your style of fishing and where you're gonna be fishing at and the types of bodies and what are you gonna be fishing on. But for me, the CX-20 just really fits my style and what I like doing and what I wanna do. So we're gonna walk through it all. 
tell you why I picked the CX-20 over the 21, and then show you a couple updates and then go catch a bass or two. So without further ado, we'll walk through the wrap. Mostly the same exact sponsors this year. Got Gamakatsu, Motor Guide, Untamed Tackle Steel, made a couple Secret Series jigs with them. Black Rifle Coffee, Striker, Carl's, Rapala. Rapala's a new one. I've been with Spro for three years. Really like the guys over there. Left on good terms. Just, it was a time where, you know, it was a better opportunity for me to go ahead and move to Rapala. So a lot more synergy with 13, Rapala. Rapala seemed to have the vision of what I was trying to do more. So, you know, nothing against the company at Spro. They made good products, great people over there, but had to, make a little adjustment this year and go to Rapala. Still a very top tier company. I've been throwing Rapala baits for a while. Everybody throws, you know, the DT6, the Shad Raps, just some baits you cannot go fishing for a year without throwing. 13 Fishing got the title sponsor this year. Kept Sunline there in the front and still with Fuji. So a lot of times people will talk about drag on spinning reels, all this type of stuff, but the guides that you're using, if you're using the best guides, it actually creates less friction whenever the line's going through the guides, especially some of these braids that we're using. So really high quality guides, especially on spinning reels, to me is extremely important. I like to have high quality guides on everything, but on spinning reels, it makes the whole rod feel better, the drag come off smoother. It just helps in a lot, a lot of ways. So check it out. Boat wrap turned out phenomenal. It looks really, really good. I like it. I like the black, I like the gray, I like blue. I really like how we have the accent colors, like the yellow gamakatsu. Black motor guy with red, orange untamed U, the red striker, red rapala. I, I really like those accent colors. I like showing off the colors that the brands already use, and I feel like it's just makes the boat look better to me. So I like a little bit of color, but not too much. Really a fan of how clean the black and gray ends up looking. So boat wrap turned out really, really good this year. I really like the way it looks. Let me know what y'all think. Do y'all like it? Do y'all not like it? A little bit too fancy, a little bit too much stuff going on, but I think it turned out pretty dang good. So hop in it we'll go through the reels of rods i'm using this year and the boat do a little boat walk through so that dude over there you might not be able to see him the one on the front he's the only person in the entire world that i've ever talked to that likes fishing as much as this man right here so i actually told ricky that you said that oh, you did? that he's one of the only other per pe person you've ever talked to that's got the sickness stay on the trolling motor it's like absolutely whatever it takes to just go get another bite. What is it? He was like, yeah. And like, whenever they're on the water together, they cannot film, they cannot eat, they cannot yeah. do anything but cast. We get out there trying to design rods or, you know, test stuff and all kinds of crap. It don't happen. Whatever like, whatever rod like they're biting. Night, and if one of them's like, you wanna go put in? The other one's gonna be like, all right. We'll go fishing. Yeah, all day, every day. Whatever it takes to go get a gum bite. We're inside the boat now, just launched it. This is obviously the Mercury four stroke 250 Pro XS. This is, uh, you know, Mercury I've been running now since 2019, I think I got my first one. Two eight foot blade power poles. That's kind of the workhorse part of the boat. Like, you know, the motor, we just kind of run them things all year as hard as we possibly can. And somehow they keep going. So power poles down here in Florida, huge thing. You talk bad about power poles in Florida. It's like a blasphemy down here. So power poles are the deal, in my opinion, They Hold you the strongest and best customer service by none. So just a super easy company to work with, work for, whatever you want to call it. Got a TH Marine Atlas jack plate. On this one, it's a 10 inch setback and a six inch rise. So that's the whole meat and potatoes part of the boat. Let's hop in here. This is where, this is what I'm actually the most particular about. This year we got some life jackets in there, but Got two Lithium Pros 36 volt trolling batteries hooked parallel. So I've got them literally running off of each other. So I've got basically one giant 36 volt battery. Got a cranking battery over there. Got tools, a little tray that'll hold stuff, life jackets, power pole pumps, extra weigh in bags, all that kind of stuff in there just in case I need it. Back compartment to the boat, relatively standard. Not a whole lot of fancy stuff you can do with the back compartments. They are, are all you know, like one piece, like you can't get into the bottom of the boat from these compartments. They're like, you know, molded in or whatever you want to call it. These two are exactly the same. Live wells, one of my favorite parts of this boat is how deep the live wells are. They're extremely deep. You can fill them up to like right here, have a ton of water in there. It's really good for the fish whenever they can, whenever they're deep, they're not sloshing around quite as much. Had a boat before that had shallower live wells. And I felt like the fish just got beat up a little bit more. Still didn't have very many of them die in my other boat that I had, but live wells just a lot shallower and I feel like they got sloshed around a good bit more. Got the TH Marine oxygenators in there. 
One thing y'all might not know about those live wells is, since Kyle's had the boat, there's actually been more crappy in those live wells than bass. It's gonna take a long time to catch up with yeah. bass. Like at least four tournaments probably. Well, like we, we caught 22 crappy, 28 crappy, then I took 10 to that guy, and then 11 or 12 to that guy. So that's like 70. So I catch, if I catch 20 a tournament, it'll take four tournaments. Yep. And that's if I make day four and all of them. So yeah, that's gonna be a lot. But there's been some bass in there too though. Yeah. So we'll, we'll close the gap faster. This has been a lot of So seats, relatively same as last year. Slightly different color, a little bit more white on the seats. But these are elevated, super good riding seats. You know, they have a little shock absorbing bracket underneath them. But the net storage, super like my favorite net storage i've ever seen in a boat net slides down right there there's some team tournaments at home i actually fish a lot of them on my small little local lakes i fish at home so the net goes in there unfolded really easy to get to but also out of the way i cannot stand stepping on a net i fish people that strap them on the front i fish people that lay them in the in the deck i fish people that have them just all over the place and there's no good place for a net except for right there behind the seats so right here we got boat logics mounts i've been running lawrence units this year but i have a couple of other brands on here right now just because i'm waiting on the new lorances to come in they'll be in very very soon i think they're called the hds pro so that'll be really cool ready to get those on there and one so the, the center box pretty standard exactly how it was last year i throw gloves in there i've been fishing at home i wasn't really gloves prepared for florida i was gloves prepared for fishing small local lakes in alabama so that's pretty pretty standard the first update they actually did this year was you can see the control panel right here turn on control panel is a little bit different a little bit more like heavy duty this year should you know didn't have many problems last year at all with the control panel but this one just a little bit more like heavy duty a little bit more kind of refined i like it a little bit better but the main reason i like it better is because on the front what i'll show you in a minute is the trim buttons are bigger bulkier and easier to hit with your foot so before it was a small little circle that you had to like try to stick your toe in or else bend down and do it so now we've got a big place we can actually step on of the board they weren't at the top they weren't no they're were in the, like relatively the same spot they're just a lot harder yeah, to actually get into but like i said boat logics mounts you know everybody almost everybody runs boat logics they're the strongest mounts but that's the graphs that's the cockpit all this stuff steering wheel oh fancy steering wheel. i have the blinker trim and blinker jack plate one really cool thing though about this boat is it's got this compartment off to the side. I got sunglasses in it right now. Got a phone charger. Put my phone in there, charge it. It stays waterproof and you can have your phone in there, easy access, charging, whatever you whatever you need to charge, charge GoPro batteries. Whatever you want to put in there that you know early morning was foggy, do a little bit rainy, put it in there and it stays dry and you can charge it the whole time. So from there back, it's all good. This right here, the cooler, pretty standard. You know, pretty normal. Got some waters in there, got some peanuts, got all kinds of stuff in there, some ice. Got the tool holders right here. The this all this slime right here is from Crappy. Trying to make sure they're at least so you can see. I got it all the way out to 18 inches. I've been catching some tag on big ones. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't caught any that big. But got the tool holders. Got Gamakatsu pliers in there. Got these Rapala scissors. Lots of stuff right here just to make everything easier. This is kind of where I sit down rig tackle. So I like to have a lot of options right here as far as pliers go. You know scissors i like to just make sure i'm stocked up so if i do sit down a lot of times i'll grab one retie then i might leave the scissors laying somewhere then i'll come back i got another pair then at the end of the day i'll usually put them all back so front deck for a 20 foot boat the front deck on this on this boat is really really big i think it's probably one of the biggest front decks on any 20 foot boat definitely any that i've ever fished out of so really cool the center storage compartment i'll show that one next you can't i mean i've got it absolutely overloaded with stuff right now I, I won't have this much stuff for any tournament but in practice i load it more than i load it for any other time so right now pretty loaded still got room for a lot more though like i can fit a ton more stuff in, it. That much stuff in there yeah i don't usually keep that much stuff in my boat so rod locker pretty i'd say i'd say you know a lot of this stuff is i call it standard but that's really what it is you know you can't do too much fancy stuff whenever it comes to rod lockers back compartments because you only have so much like square footage inside of a boat and you want to use it as much as possible to actually you know fit as much stuff as you can throughout you know a day whenever you need it throughout a year whatever so standard standard center box is cool because the dividers but for the most part i don't know how many rods i can fit in there i probably fit 
25 to 30 rods in there you know as long as i don't put spinning reels in there when you put spinning reels in there everything goes wrong like it's just that's where it goes awry as soon as you put spinning reels in there front deck got boat logic mounts up here i'll have two lorances up there at so as soon as the other one comes in got a motor guide tour trailer motor you know in florida i just like how quiet and reliable this tour is. I'll have a tour pro as soon as I need spot lock, which will, or as soon as I need pinpoint, which will be, you know, third, fourth term of the year. I'll have it on for that. But for right now, I'm gonna run this tour pro. It's a little bit lighter, you know, just all reliable is what I call this sucker right here. So pretty standard. Got the 0.1 antenna up there for my Lorances. So I have my, you know, boat icon actually in the right spot all the time. Have really good location if I'm fishing offshore or just want to know exactly how the boat's facing. That 0.1 is just a little bit more exact. And that right there is a control paddle for the front. You can see those big trim buttons in the front is actually one of the things that I like the best because I can just hit it with my foot very, very easily. I can trim the motor up and down, which I don't need to trim it down near as often as I need to trim it up from fishing, you know, shallow because I go over rocks, stuff, and I trim my motor up. So these are the reels I'll be using this year. I'll be using mostly the Envy rods for the most part. I'll use some use, some stuff like that, but Concept Cs this year super lightweight reel extremely extremely smooth i used the inception more last year that reel has been updated and just figured we might as well go ahead and jump on the concept c train because this is you know a phenomenal reel really really lightweight really smooth so that's what i'm using this year really like those reels so i think that's about the gist of the boat walkthrough one more thing that I didn't show y'all this is a really cool part i use this a ton like a crazy amount actually in this little drawer right here with a lesson right now, we got beef jerky, raffle of scale in there to pull with, lots of stuff in there that, you know, I, I just use whenever I'm sitting there. So I catch a fish, I sit right there, I weigh it, put a coal tag on it, then put it in live oil. So that's kind of my system. And that's about it. We've got a trusty tripod right here for my new camera dude. And then a ring light in case my new camera dude wants to make herself a TikTok. So that's what we're, that's what we're working the with Denali this year. Suit. Yep, the Striker Denali suit, just in case my new camera dude gets a little cold and that's about it that's the gist of the boat you know a lot of this stuff is there's not too much you can do and it seems like whenever you start to try to do too much fancy nuanced stuff to a bass boat you actually do yourself a little more harm than good because these things there's engineers designing all these bass boats so they're really really thought out so doing anything different a lot of time goes against the grain of what you know you're used to and what makes the most sense so really just a good solid consistent layout and you know, I like how much room is in this actual 20, but I like the 20 because it's a little bit faster, a little bit more sporty, turns a little bit better, doesn't handle big waves quite as well as the CX-21 does, but I was on Lake Ontario last year and some giant waves, five, six footers, and I was super impressed with how this boat handled. So that was that's really the, that's really the litmus test of how good a boat is in rough waters when you go up there and you're in actually really, really big water. So really like this boat really easy to drive through the big waves because you have a lot of control whenever you're driving so give me three qualities in this canvas that makes you prefer this boat over others speed ride maneuverability so i like how easy this boat is to turn and whip on the trailer motor that's a big deal for me because i like to fish down the bank i like to get really in tight to stuff i like to make sure that my cast is as efficient as possible. So that means like getting around the reeds, getting up behind the docks, and just the way you this boat steers on the trolling motor is really, really good, but also the way that it drives. Like, it's really fun to drive. Car's really good, handles good going back up in creeks and stuff. I can, I can stay at a really high speed around turns. I don't lose five or six miles per hour going around sharp curves in this boat. In other boats, I always have. In this boat, I seem to only lose two or three miles per hour going around really sharp curves, and this boat is pretty fast. So leave me a comment below, what do you think this boat's gonna run loaded this year. Give me a mile per hour of how fast this boat's gonna run loaded this year. And then we'll film it and show who's right. So basically that's the layout of the boat. Got the power in the back. Everything's nice, neat and organized and clean up front. And now we just gotta catch some bass out of it. Now we gotta catch up on the crappy numbers and put some bass in that dang live well because it's time to go catch some dang big bass.